In this video, I'll walk you through the steps of conducting a repeated measures t-test. You're going to find that the process is similar to all the other t-tests that we've done so far and the z-test as well. I actually think that a repeated measures t-test is even a little bit simpler than the independent samples t-test. Let's take a look. So the repeated measures t-test, like I said, they're structurally similar to other t-statistics, but now we're going to be using something called different scores. And we're going to test hypotheses about population differences between two treatment conditions, but this time we're only using one set of sample data. In other words, one group of participants measured two different times. This is what the t-statistic looks like for the repeated measures t-test. We have the mean differences that we are observing in our data minus what we would expect to observe in the population. Spoiler alert, that's zero. And then we have the standard error. The amount of difference you would expect to see if no treatment had been involved. So this is, again, structurally similar to things that we've worked with before. So it forms a ratio with that same structure. And the mean difference is divided by the standard error. So this is all very familiar to our other T statistics. So let's take a look at some data. I think it's easier to visualize when we're putting real numbers to all of this. So this is a study that examines vertigo and experiencing dizziness after taking medication. There are four participants and each participant is measured twice. So you'll notice that we have X1 and X2. And when we're doing a repeated measures t-test, X1 means the first score and X2 is the second score. So there's a temporal order to this. This score happens before that score happens. So in this study, participants were measured before medication and after taking medication. We're gonna compute a different score for each individual and the different score is gonna be found by taking the second score minus the first score. Now, order really matters in this because different scores can be positive and or they can be negative. But I'm going to take the time two score and subtract the time one score and that will help me when I'm interpreting my data. So let's take a look at these scores on before medication and after medication. And by the way, these numbers represent the minutes that it takes for somebody to get dizzy. So when we're doing a repeated measures t-test, one of the very first things we're gonna do is we're gonna make a third column of different scores. And basically, again, I'm taking the scores of the second variable minus the score on the first variable. So I have 210 minus 215 equals a negative five. 242 minus 221 equals 21, and so on. And then the next thing I'm gonna do after I have these different scores is I'm gonna sum them up. You see that sigma and then the D for different scores. So that's the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find these different scores and then we're gonna sum them up. So after we have the different scores, we need to find out what is the average different score. And so we basically we take the sum of those different scores and divide it by the total N. Easy, easy. So the sum of the different scores here is 64 and there happen to be four participants. So the average different score is 16. That means that the average of these four numbers is 16. That's the average of the different scores. The sample difference serves as the sample data for the hypothesis test. So we have the different score here of 16, but our null hypothesis is that there would be no difference. So this is gonna represent zero. So actually when I'm writing this out, I don't usually even write this second part, but technically it is there. So we have our different score of 16 minus zero. So our numerator is gonna be 16. And then we need to figure out our denominator, our standard error. We have the difference that we're seeing in our data, and this would be the difference that would be expected. So here we go. The numerator again measures the difference between the sample mean and the hypothesized population mean, which is zero. And the denominator is the difference that is reasonable to expect between a sample mean and the population mean if there's no treatment effect. So in other words, how much difference is expected given normal sampling error? So this is what we're seeing in our data. This is expected error. 
In order to find our standard error in this case, we're going to go ahead and follow three steps. And this will look very familiar to the one sample t-test actually. The very first thing we need to do is we need to figure out our sum of squares. And we do that by taking each of the different scores, subtracting the mean of the different scores, squaring each of these scores and summing them up. We end up with our sums of squares. Our sample variance is equal to the sums of squares divided by n minus 1. Why n minus 1? Well, because we're estimating the variance in the population. We don't know the population variance. And so we have to make this little adjustment right here, n minus 1, because our sample variance is automatically going to be less than the population variance. So we make this adjustment to make our sample variance look more like the population. And then the last thing that we do to find our, sam our, standard, our sampling error is to find the square root of our variance divided by n. So this is just like the one sample t-test to find the, the error. So repeated sample t-statistic calculations are done by using sample difference scores, like I said. So we're looking for differences in those means. And the variance is also used um, using the sample the samples. We're estimating the variance in the population. So we're interested in population difference scores. We want to know what happens if everyone in the population were measured in two conditions. So we give a pretest and we give a post-test, and sample difference scores are used to test hypothesis about the population of different scores. So in other words, this is just a reminder that even though we're looking at samples, we're really making inferences about the populations that the samples come from. We, we're not really saying this sample is different from that sample. We're saying the population that this sample comes from is different from the population this other sample comes from. Just as a reminder that we're always making our hypotheses about populations based on the samples that we have in our hands. All right, so let's take a look and see what the null hypothesis would look like. So we have the null hypothesis symbol here, and we have mu d. That's the differences between the means in the population. And we say that that is zero. So in other words, we say that there's no consistent or systematic difference between the two conditions. The null hypothesis in this case doesn't say that every single individual will have a different score equal to zero. It is saying that some individuals will have a positive change from one treatment to the other, and some will have a negative change score. But on average, the entire population will have a mean difference in ze of zero. In other words, there's nothing systematic happening here that all the differences sort of flesh each other out, and on average, there's a mean difference of zero. But the, null or the alternative hypothesis says there is a systematic difference between the two conditions. They consist, the scores are consistently either moving in a positive or a negative direction, but they're all going in the same direction. And so in this case, we say that the different scores are not equal to zero. The independent variable, whatever it is that we've done between the pretest and the post-test, is changing the dependent variable. That's what we're saying. And when that change happens, it produces a non-zero mean difference between the treatments. So we no longer have zero as um, the average distance. Okay, in the next video, we're going to start talking about degrees of freedom for the repeated measures t-test.